morning, Oscar. So, welcome back to another Gibbs adventure. And today, we're gonna fire up the Scandic and do some maintenance on it and get it ready to go. Get her on the trailer, do an oil change today, get her all organized. Changing oil today. Get your access panel in the bottom. Pull all the other doors off and ready to go. And that's the kit. So the muffler has to come out. There's four springs. So you can get out the filter. And then it takes a uh, Eight millimeter for the nuts to get the four, the three bolts off for the nuts. So there's the uh, oil cap off. There's the new uh, gasket that comes with it. You can see the old one here. I'll peel that off. I'm good to go. So there's the replacement. There's the old gasket. Probably could have reused it if you wanted to, but they give you a new one. So away you go. And there's the, the new filter, goes down like this, into the body, and away we go. New gasket on the oil plug, on the two oil plugs, all set. Okay, it's a bit of a tight hole to put it in. You can do it. There it goes. Just snug it onto the... There it is. Good for the cap. So that's the panel that accesses your oil pan where your two bolts are. I put one back in and I have still one to go. And it's an Allen key and it just threads gently into the hole. And you don't want to be careful not to cross thread it. And away you go. So don't forget to put the oil in. And the oil change kit that you get is designed specifically for the machine. You tell them the model that you have and they'll give you the kit and it takes, they give you exactly the oil that you need to, to do this. So in my case, it's three and a half liters. Once you uh, get the oil in, you let, it, you let it run for a minute so that you can uh, fill up your uh, filter case in that with oil. And then you check to see what the oil level is. When I first checked it, it was way over the fill limit, but you got to know that the oil filter casing is empty. So when you change the oil, 
You should always be in the habit of changing the oil in the gearbox or the transmission, whatever you want to call it. So the filler plug in the top, a drain plug, and then there's a drain plug underneath. I just about have it all drained out. But uh, that can get condensation in it. And so uh, it's definitely a good idea to keep an eye on that. And, uh, you know, we don't do that many oil changes, so why not do the uh, gearbox at the same time? And there's two plugs. There's a drain plug and there's a fill plug. Technically, you fill it until it starts coming out the top. But... Uh, Takes a little while. Pretty well got it engineered so that, there it is. Oops. Put the right end of the plug in there. Be careful not to cross right anything. Doesn't hurt if you put a little extra in it. There's like a lick and a prayer left in the jar when you're done, so it doesn't hurt anything to put it in. So another thing you want to check when you're servicing your machine is to make sure your belt is adjusted right. My belt is perfect. It's got to be flush with the clutch up here. If it's sunk down a little bit, you have to adjust it. I'm lucky I don't have to do it today. And the other thing you have to check on these things is that plug right there. They break and then that spring comes ripping into your track. And this is the uh, the kit you buy or the plug you buy at uh, your dealer. Carry it as a spare. So this is what you want to carry for a bush fix. 13 millimeter uh, wrench and a six millimeter Allen key with the bushing, the nut, and the bolt. And that'll get you out of the out of the bush. If you just carry this, it doesn't do anything because when it breaks, the bolt actually shears off. And that's what the problem is. So you lose the bushing and everything. So you gotta carry that. If, and I recommend you throw that in your machine and forget about it until the day you need it. Otherwise, there's not much you can do if that, that spring comes out and sure that, that bushing shears off and away you go. Something else you need to check on your machine is your, uh, make sure your pogo uh, bolts are tight. It's a six millimeter again. Just tack her in here and just make sure that they're snug. They can come loose. And there's actually a grease fitting in here for your thing, for your uh, pogo. So just make sure you So just give it a shot of grease. You can take this panel off if you want to be really fancy, but you can still get that stuff right here. So it's easy to check. So when you're doing maintenance, always good to grease it and then check to make sure that the, the bolts are tight. I'll do the other side here now. Same thing on the other side here. Get the grease fitting on. And that should do it. And then again, just take your six millimeter wrench, your Allen key here, and just making sure that the, the uh, nuts are tight here. Okay. There's two of them, so just quickly check them. Good to go. So there's seven different spots to grease your uh, suspension, your undercarriage. 
And uh, you should always check all your idler wheels to make sure they're, they're all spinning. You can't check your drive wheels, but you can look to see if there's any cracks or pieces missing. You can have a quick look at your sliders to see, inspect your sliders to see, because that's a wearing part. I, I looked at them, they look pretty good. So, get at these. Okay, something else is important to watch is this little screen on the side. You see mine is torn. It's a double screen, so I'm all right, but I need to get a new uh, screen there. I must have got it on a, caught it on a branch. So I ripped it, and you don't, what'll happen is you'll get fine snow that'll get into the air intake and into the carbon that will cause you a lot, of, a lot of heartache. So make sure when you inspect your machine, like I said, I gotta get a new screen, and it just pops in and pops out. can take that in and out pretty easy and get a replacement I'll let you know later on what that cost to, to replace it so very easy to take out but like I said very important that uh, that screen stays intact you don't want to see it uh, there I guess you can see it maybe a little better there but I must have caught a branch and it just ripped it but uh, it just pops into the panel like that a couple little clips easy to do it's all or anyway so there it is, ready to go. I have to chuckle there. I'm watching a few of the other YouTube channels and whatnot. And uh, all the trappers are doing maintenance on their equipment. So you got to know fur prices suck when we're uh, fixing things. Usually we're driving things. So I guess we could call this Maintenance Tuesday. But uh, I'm really totally impressed with this machine. I've driven skidoos my whole life for over 40 years and I've probably had 10 or 15 different skidoos and without a doubt this is the best machine I've ever owned in my life. The places this thing goes is it's just unbelievable so a little bit of TLC to it and we're good for the season so we're going to get busy here trapping a bit and away we go.